The views expressed on the Final Straw Radio do not necessarily reflect those of Asheville FM, Friends of Community Radio, or any of the affiliate radio stations airing the show. You're listening to WSFMLP 103.3 in Asheville, North Carolina. This is the Final Straw, and I'm Burst of Goodness. The show can also be heard on KWTF in Bodega Bay, California, KOWALP in Olympia, Washington, and WCRSLP in Columbus, Ohio. The show will later be archived at thefinalstrawradio.noblogs.org, and you can email us with questions or suggestions at thefinalstrawradio at riseup.net. Also, if you're interested in rebroadcasting any episode or segment, you can feel free to do so. Just send us an email so we know you're out there. If you care to, you can also send us letters at The Final Straw, care of Asheville FM, 864 Haywood Road, Asheville, North Carolina, 28806. You can also note that we are podcasting on iTunes. To reap the enormous benefits of this fact, you can visit the iTunes store or the podcast thing on any available smartphone, ideally yours or in your possession, and search for The Final Straw Radio. Please take a minute to leave us a comment and rate us, too. This show is brought to you by Firestorm Books and Coffee, located at 610 Haywood Road. Firestorm Books and Coffee is a worker-owned cooperative in Asheville specializing in offbeat, underground, and independent literature. You can find a sample of Firestorm's catalog of books and zines, plus a full calendar of events at their website, firestorm.coop. This week, we present a conversation with a member of CNA de Efe, or the Anarchist Black Cross of Mexico City. During the hour, she speaks about the work of CNA DF, or CNA Mexico, uh, prison in Mexican society, anti-prison organizing versus prison abolitionism, transformative justice, counter-repression, and the prisoners that CNA is working to support. Specific prisoners that CNA supports include Alvaro Sebastian, Fernando Barcenas, Luis Fernando Sotelo, Abraham Cortez, uh, Miguel Angel Peralta Betanzos, and more. But first, here are a few announcements. After a series of violent raids which saw over 100 people arrested, the most recent of which was on October 27th at Standing Rock and other camps resisting the Dakota Access Pipeline, there has been a call for renewed and amped up solidarity for this resistance. This could include coming to North Dakota and fighting the pipeline and joining the struggle, organizing where you live and taking action against banks, the Army Corps of Engineers, and politicians backing the project and sending money and supplies to the encampment. Already solidarity actions are taking place, such as the occupation of buildings, solidarity demonstrations, and more. To get more ideas of what solidarity with this resistance could mean and where to send supplies and funds if you are able, you can visit nodaplsolidarity.org and click the tab Support the Camps. Kinetic justice of the Free Alabama Movement has been transferred out of Holman Prison in Alabama to Kilby Correctional Facility and from there to Limestone Corrections, known among the Alabama prisoners to be a, quote, bully unit, where prisoners deemed disruptive are brutalized. This occurred one day before he was reportedly scheduled to meet with an advocate from the Southern Poverty Law Center. This is in clear retaliation on the part of the prison system and is an attempt to silence a dissenting voice which has been very important both in FAM and in the prison strike. In response, Kinetic is ending the first week of a hunger strike to protest his treatment and because he doesn't trust Limestone to not tamper with the food they give him. Keep your eyes on the Free Alabama Movement's webpage, freealabamamovement.com, for updates on Kinetic's situation and how to help. You can also follow them on Twitter, at freealamovement, and you can also follow Freedom for Kinetic at four underscore k-i-n-e-t-i-c lastly though not leastly don't forget that saturday the 5th of november will see resistance to a national socialist movement rally or more plainly neo-nazi in harrisburg pa the nsm is teaming up with the traditionalist worker party for this charade in the so-called quote heart of democracy the twp being the same boneheads who were responsible for drawing knives in sacramento this past summer Central PA Antifa and related anti-racists are calling for as much support as possible at this event to help run the Nazis out of town. You can get up with this situation by connecting with Central PA Antifa on Facebook by searching their name, and you can also donate to them by visiting 
gofundme.com slash central PA Antifa. And you can also get super up-to-date information by following them on Twitter at central PA Antifa. And now for some words from anarchist prisoner Sean Swain. Watch us say, watch us say! Under the system of capitalism, we've experienced a proliferation of homelessness. You would think that the growing number of homeless people would impeach the mythology promoted by the United States that this is the land of opportunity. You would think. Instead, what we typically find is that the belief regarding homelessness is that they are shiftless and lazy or perhaps mentally ill. Most Americans hold on to the idea that homeless people are somehow qualitatively different from us that they possess some kind of malfunction that makes them that way. On occasion, you might find an ordinary, hard-working American who experiences a streak of misfortune, and he or she might end up homeless temporarily before invariably pulling herself or himself up by the bootstraps. We Americans are bootstrap pullers. We don't stay down long. So the long-term homeless, those are the folks who have something wrong with them. This popular conception is reinforced even in entertainment. Consider the acclaimed film, The Pursuit of Happiness, where Will Smith portrays an industrious and self-motivated man who finds himself homeless along with his young son, due to no fault of his own. We see Will Smith's character struggling to find work, bathing in public bathroom sinks, and waiting in line at homeless shelters. In the end, our motivated and hard-working hero finds a gravy white-collar job and achieves the American dream, just like we always knew he would. We can feel good. We can vicariously live out his redemption story. We don't think about the other 200 homeless people who were waiting in line at the shelter, or how those 200 people were there the day after Will Smith's character got hired, or the day after that. Those aren't the stories that interest Hollywood, or us. Deep down, we know, if those people weren't somehow malfunctioned, and if they just had Will Smith's assertiveness, they could grab hold of their bootstraps. So we don't think about them. I heard a statistic recently on the average age of a homeless person in the United States. Know what it is? Nine years old. To reconcile this fact with our popular beliefs, we must conclude that in the United States, we have an inordinate number of lazy, shiftless, mentally ill nine-year-olds. If only those wayward nine-year-olds would straighten up, fly right, get haircuts and jobs, they could pull themselves up by the bootstraps. Nine-year-olds these days, they act like they're entitled. So here's my thinking. We have a totally obsolete view of homelessness. Right now, as civilization unravels, we see a groundswell of those who are alienated and displaced, mostly vulnerable populations like the very young or the mentally ill or the aged. This is a growing population that isn't served by the larger system, a population from which the larger system doesn't seem to feel it can gain any service either. So these are people whose civilization is essentially divorcing. There's a kind of termination of the standard relationship. As civilized people, indoctrinated on the mythology, we fear such a situation, viewing homelessness as precarious and vulnerable and helpless. I'm not sure that's altogether accurate. I'm reminded of Henry David Thoreau, a famous dead guy, who analyzed our civilized way of life in a comparison to Native American tribes. Thoreau questioned the wisdom of toiling and struggling for 30 years in order to pay off a house when Native Americans could build their respective shelters in a matter of hours. He concluded that we don't so much as own our homes as our homes own us. So in that light, we should probably think of the homeless not as vulnerable and helpless, but as free. The tribes of teenagers who squat in the tunnels of the New York subway system are not shackled by 30 years of servitude to pay off their living spaces. Because we've been programmed, because we've been programmed to think of being anchored to one spot, indoctrinated to equate sedentary existence with security, we are unable to perceive that the people we call homeless are not without places to live. What I mean is, they aren't living nowhere, they're living everywhere. While all of us chained in place think of our living spaces as constituted by a specific set of four walls, homeless people are at home wherever they are. It would seem that this is a sentiment that's contagious. 
In 2009, for instance, a million homeowners in the U.S. simply walked away from their homes and opted for homelessness. The fact of the matter is, swivelization is in decay. It is falling to pieces. It's unsustainable, unsalvageable, and at some point, according to some sort of pecking order, it's going to spit all of us out. It's inevitable. It occurs to me that when this monster machine finally crumbles in its own footprint, those of us with the greatest chance of making the post-swivilization transition are those with the experience of traveling light, of foraging creatively, of surviving successfully in mobile communities. Homelessness is the wave of the future. Let's all walk away right now and get a head start. This is Anarchist Prisoner Sean Swain from Warren Correctional, Lebanon, Ohio. If you're listening, you are the resistance. You can write to Sean Swain at his new address by directing it to Sean Swain, 243-205, Warren C.I., P.O. Box 120, 5787 State Route 63, Lebanon, Ohio, 45036. For updates on his situation, his bid for U.S. President in 2016, and more writings by Sean can be found at seanswain.org. So I was just going to introduce you as a member of the Anarchist Black Cross, or uh, Cruz Negra Anarquista from Mexico City, is that correct? Yes. Okay, cool. Um, can you talk a little bit about what CNA does in Mexico City? Okay. <laughs> it's supposed that we work in three different lines. In the beginning, we wasn't exactly like a collective. We was more like a, like a space for coordinate different jobs around the, these three lines. At the end, we are not too much people, so mm-hmm. <laughs> we end like working really close. But it's more like we work uh, around these three specific things. The first is like the like um, sparring, you say that like defense stuff no, or like uh, it's around the thinking against the jail, like okay. the abolitionist and the anti carcelario. Yeah, anti prison. Yeah, yeah, the anti prison ideas. Mm-hmm. Uh, so we try to work in publications and like. Uh, make this kind of way of thinking like I get it know, out there and get, get people talking about it yeah like make it closer to other people that it's not the people that used to talk a lot about this mm-hmm. more like to make diffusion about these ideas mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and How? to fight against the jail specifically no we don't address too much the abolitionist idea we talk more about the anti-prison idea because the abolitionist is more close to the idea of the reform Mm -hmm. and we don't believe in the reform we believe that the jail must be destroyed so instead of arguing like the the prison is horrible the jail is bad we need to decarcerate we need to give more people more time with their families instead of that just like yeah the jail don't work Mm -hmm. Even for the thing that it's supposed that the jail is going to work, the jail don't work. Don't work for anything. Mm-hmm. Don't work for be my, more safe. To, yeah. Don't work for make the societies more safe, even with that. Don't work to evict the crime. Don't work to any of these things. Don't, yeah, don't cover any of the proposals that it's supposed that the jails have. So they, yeah, the jail can be destroyed any day and anything is going to change for bad. Mm-hmm. So we think that there is no reason for the jails to exist. Most like the perpetuation of the system, the status quo, mm-hmm. and the power of the money and the political power of the people that have the power in this yeah. world. And how does how does how do those arguments how are they received by the people that you talk to? Like, does do you experience the parts of Mexican society that you interact with around anti-prison perspectives as being as accepting that off the bat, or do they? Is no, it a the people is afraid for sure, especially in Mexico that it's a society where there is a lot of violence mm-hmm. and a lot of crime, like yeah. regular crime, yeah. and things that well, actually is the poor people, the people that suffer more mm-hmm. about 
or all this violence in the society. Yeah, the people don't accept like really easy this idea, but depend. If you talk with the people, you can ask if they have some family in the jail and they, it's really probably that they have some family or some people that know in the jail. And you can ask if they say that the people go out of the jail feeling better or being a better person. And the answer is gonna be always the same, that no, the people will start being bad or even take new bad like knowledge mm -hmm. in the jail. <clears throat> So the people know that the jail don't work for make you a better person. So that is a good argument. Mm -hmm. And also you can say like in hard numbers that the people that go to the jail is going more each year. Yeah. And even with that, the violence and the crime is going up also. Mm -hmm. So it's really logical that the jail is not working. Or maybe the jail is actually contributing. If people are learning criminal skills on the inside and yeah. getting socialized towards that, then... Yeah, that's that also. So you can try to talk about this. And also we talk a lot with people out of the prisons. Mm -hmm. And that is really different because almost all the people that is going out of the pri of some prison to visit some family know that they really know that the prison doesn't work. And and actually suffering the, the jail because the jail is not only for the person that it's actually locked, it's also for the family, it's also for the friends, it's like for the social community around these people. So it's so much easy to talk with these people about the bad conditions, the corruption, the violence inside the jail, the the corruption that the people deal every day when you go to visit someone and you need to pay for for <coughs> letting with medicine or with food or with the material that the prisoner needs for a workshop that are, it's taken inside of the jail. Almost all the time you need to pay for all these things. And the people that have family in the prison know that. So it's really usual that this when you talk against the jail with these people, you have like a great response. And in some points, even the people can try to imagine how to organize to fight back against the corruption or some things. The thing is that they have your family mm -hmm. and they can punish your family. And this is also a really hard reality. Yeah, they're held hostage. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, we try to work with with these things and also in that way we try to try to work and say okay the jail don't work for anything don't have any good things but also we as an anarchist uh, believe that that we can build a new ways of justice mm -hmm. knowing the place of the jail for but just for make like our all autonomous justice in the communities for the people in the neighborhoods for the people in the communities so we try to also talk with the people for another way through to conflict resolution to not violent communication to to try to deal with the troubles without the intervention of the state or of the cops or of any like authority that comes from out and from high to say what's the truth we try to talk with the people that it's more usual that the communities know the answer of, about the questions, about the challenge, about the troubles that they are living. Mm -hmm. And try to like see also the crime as a social phenomenon and not a thing that happened because this person is mad. It's more like something that happened in the society. And if you work with this person to try to change change this specific trouble also you can work with the community to to stop these things to happen mm -hmm. anymore it's tra kind of the idea about the tra uh, transformative justice it's not only to deal with like one crime it's more about to stop some like behaviors that damage the community to happen in this community it's kind of like not <clears throat> not looking at the cough or the sneeze but trying to get to the actual sickness inside, sort of. Yeah, that's something like that. Um, 
when you're when when you're explaining this to people or talking to people about that what sort of uh inspirations do you pull from like do you say like oh look like in your family like if one sibling like hits the other sibling then you kind of set them aside and have them talk or like how do you we try to say that this works normally and also we make like some kind of funny exercise like if you are reading a book it's it's kind of different like games that you can do about uh, not violent communication and it's like okay so I'm just gonna read a book in front of me I'm, I'm gonna try to talk with you but you are don't give me any attention so I'm gonna start to feel mad so we make this kind of exercise with the people without explaining mm -hmm. all the exercise so at the end we ask how do you feel I feel angry or I feel so we talk that sometimes when you are uh, having a discussion with someone, you feel like that. Mm -hmm. And it's really hard to make a good communication with someone when you are mad or mm -hmm. you are sad or you are feeling something really strong. So, yeah, we begin in, in, in that things, in really small things to try to to make a difference between that idea about the justice that say that the justice is given to each one the thing that each one deserves mm -hmm. and we are trying to say that not that we believe that the justice is that everyone have the things that uh, that everyone needs and this is something that we build together you're listening to our conversation with a member of the Cruz Negra Anarchista of Mexico City, or the Black Cro Anarchist Black Cross of Mexico. This is the Final Straw Radio, and I'm Bursa Goodness. Asheville FM's semi-annual fund drive is underway. Recurring donations are the best way to ensure that your favorite music or talk show remains on the air. Become a part of our 103.3 team by donating $103.30 one time, or schedule a $10 donation every month. Or sign up for our VIP level for a 365 one-time donation or just $30 per month. Members of both levels will get Fundrive swag and other perks. Listen all this week for more details. It kind of feels like the, the image or the like model of <clears throat> the state sitting above and imposing justice on people is almost a very Christian or very, like, as if it's God dispensing yeah. with lightning bolts or justice. Yes, some like that. So, yeah, we try to explain like, if you are not like in a competition, it's more easy to imagine like the point of, point of view of the other people. Mm -hmm. So it's more uh, easy to be empathic when you are not trying to win something against some other people. So the idea of the justice is not a competition, it's more like try to reboil this thing that make you feel um, bienestar, I don't know how to say bienestar. Well-being. Yeah, it's like to recover the, yeah. this feeling in you and in all the people that it's part of some conflict. Mm -hmm. And we also say that this model or this kind of system have limits, but also the thing is that if something don't work in this way, it's our way, and we can stop it wherever we want. Mm -hmm. And when you all go to a trial mm -hmm. in the state, even if you say, okay, I forgive this person, I don't want to, you can't do it. The state se seeks its It's not your decision, yeah. and don't matter if you feel better or if you feel even more bad, because it's not about you, it's about the state. Mm -hmm. So it's something that we try to save, that when we are like trying to build a new way of justice, even if it don't work, it's our way, so we can stop wherever we, we want. Mm -hmm. And we can change, and we can try all the other options. If, if we try like in a good option and don't work, we always have the bad options yeah. that kick the ass of these yeah. people that is... <laughs> or exile them, or... or yeah. Or even, it's not the choice that we make, but <clears throat> even if the people want to go to the law. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's one of, the, one of the, the things or the pillars of what CNA does. What's, what's another? Uh, okay, yeah. That's more one about uh, thinking against the jail. The other, it's uh, 
the inhibition of the repression. It's like, okay, it's hard to, under, to understand, <laughs> but yeah. We know that the repression uh, came like always in the side of the state. Yeah. Like it's an intrinsic thing of the state. The state comes with the repression and the repression is going to happen always. Yeah. But sometimes we are like really good targets for the repression mm -hmm. because we are not organized enough and we, or we don't know like what options we have or we are not thinking about this can happen. So the idea is try to make our communities stronger to face their oppression, to know even things like know your rights, even if you decide to don't cooperate with the system, don't cooperate with the police or the jail, it's good that you know what are your rights. Mm -hmm. It's good that you know that you can refuse to the cops take your blood if they don't have an order. It's mm -hmm. good that you know some things. And with that information, you can decide wherever you want. The decision, it's a personal political decision that we don't make for the people. But it's good to know what you can do. Yeah. And also, now we are trying to make a, a workshop about first aid. When Just medical care, like medical emergency? Care, like oh, okay. oh, first aid. Okay. First aid, yeah. yeah. Sorry. yeah. But yeah, we are also trying to make this workshop to try to to support our communities also. Mm -hmm. To know when, uh, also to know when you can like give the medical care to your friend or mm -hmm. to your camarade and when you actually need a hospital, even if that uh, meaning to face the cops or face like yeah. the possibility of the jail. Or so if someone's like being sought or someone got injured during a demonstration, then people would try to, to heal their friend first, but in case of emergency, like... And, yeah, for no when you need to try to deal with this, and when it's an emergency and you need to take a decision fast, even if it's a really f***ed up situation, yeah. but sometimes it's the life of your friend in yeah. your hands. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> so to... In the beginning, try to see the difference between the situations mm -hmm. and try, try uh, know in what situation you are, and then yeah, can give the care what is yeah when it's possible. So the first pillar is like <clears throat> like a defense of oneself against people within the community, like talking about restorative justice or transformative justice. And the second one is sort of like a, def a collective defense against the state. And against the repression, yeah. yeah. Okay. And the third one is like the. It's not like some of these lines is more important than other. It's only three lines. Can mm -hmm. we see for each <laughs> side? <laughs> it's it's a that matters. Yeah. But the other, it's about uh, uh, direct support to person impressions, persons impression, and work with anarchist prisoners. We just to say also that not only anarchist prisoners, but more than all anarchist prisoners, also other people that we think that uh, that have the intention to fight back against the jail, inside the jail, mm -hmm. even if they are not anarchists. So like prison rebels, yeah. people talk about here. Yeah, and we also say that we don't fight for the prisoners, we fight with the prisoner for the freedom. Mm -hmm. So we also try to make this solidarity relationships with the people that work with us, that we are working together like as a comrades mm -hmm. for the freedom. And yeah, the difference is that they are in jail and for now we are not in jail. Are there examples that you would want to give of, of non-anarchist comrades who have faced repression or rebels who you've done that sort of interaction with that kind of point to the work that you do? Do you know what I mean? Are there like members of certain like communities or like yeah. ethnic groups or like sometimes yeah, we struggles? work with some political prisoners or some other prisoners that that want to make a relation with us and they are not anarchists. We work with Alvaro Sebastian that it's a uh, teacher from Oaxaca, from the Los Fichas region, that it's incarcerated in Oaxaca. Mm -hmm. And we start to make like letters with him and in some point 
with all with him about the possibility to work together and something so, sometimes we do it like work like this mm -hmm. and some other times we work with yeah with other prisoners that are not no especially anarchists not all the prisoners that we are working with now are anarchists there are some people that claim himself like libertarios mm -hmm. that is not exactly the same and not the same as libertarians in the united states just to say like maybe yes well when people say libertarians in the united states it's this like philosophy of like thomas jefferson sort of thing of very small government the only government is I for know, maybe no. for no. armies and police and very much about private property. No, I don't property. think that it's the same. It's more like people that believe in the idea about the, liber the libertad, okay, about yeah. the freedom. Some like <clears> that, <throat> I suppose. But, but yeah, it's more than all these people that it's close of some of the ideas about the anarchists, but it's not really sure that they want to mm -hmm. claim himself as an anarchist. Some like that. And yeah, and and yeah, we work with the people and right now we are like also trying to work with with other prisoners that I are working with one of our comrades in prison. He is starring uh, Fernando Bárcenas. Mm -hmm. He was arrested uh, after a demonstration against the increasing of the price of the subway in Mexico City. Mm -hmm. In that demonstration, one Coca-Cola Christmas tree was born mm -hmm. and he was uh, accused to burn the Christmas tree and he was arrested he had he was been pretty active in prison he is making a newspaper and also uh, he's making a, now some workshops mm -hmm. and he begin with other prisoners a, a collective that the name of the collective is Cimarron and they are trying to work uh, like without any collaboration with this, the institution in some workshops about music, about how to write like short histories or poetry or different things. Also about to how to make radio or cool. different things. And they are trying to deal with the medical care things because this is a really <laughs> of reality in the jail. There mm -hmm. is a really, really bad medical care service. So they are trying to see like other ways to make like the gestion of the health yeah. in the jail and <clears throat> that it's kind of hard but they are trying to see like the alternative medicine or other so, like things. herbs or acupressure or massage and, like, things like that yeah okay significa cimarron cimarron it's the cimarron it's the name that receives some hearts that it's uh, no, that it's not a domestic horse. It's like a horse that it's like wild. Mm -hmm. Okay. And also, it's the name that received, like in the conquest in uh -huh. Mexico, when the slaver, with the slave, uh, run away for the yeah plantations or something like that. They found like free communities, okay. and the slave that was like running away for the owners was named Cimarron. Okay, it's like in uh, in North America, we usually call them maroon. I suppose that it's something yeah. like that. Like as if they were dr like they ran away from the boat or whatever and go into the wilderness, and sometimes slaves, sometimes run away indentured servants, sometimes native folks. Yeah. yeah okay. Yeah, it's the meaning of Cimarron. That's cool. I really don't know if they take the name for the horses or yeah. for the slaves, <laughs> because also they uh, they believe in the wild yeah. nature, so it can be also for the, but it's against the domestication or the slavery. Cool. And yeah, that's the the meaning, and they are trying to organize this kind of work, like self-organized work inside the jail. Like without collaborate with the institution for have like better conditions of life, mm -hmm. and yeah, that's so. We are trying to support Fernando in this work, trying to support him to make the workshops to see what other things he's proposing. What now. does that support look like? Like sending him medical things or like literature or 
the things that he asked for okay. <laughs> and we can do it. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, and also try to make the fusion of the newspaper that mm -hmm. he make inside or of the... They make a music band and they just record a CD. Yeah, so so we're gonna name. try to, yeah. to make the distribution of the CD outside. And also they make like a anthology of the things that I they that they write in the writing workshop. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So that kind of things. Cool. And economical support and yeah. the things that we can do. Not it's not only the the ABC. There's mm -hmm. also other anarchist people that are working really hard to support Fernando. So, yeah. and we just, we try to organize together things to support Fernando each year, yeah. each time that he needed. That's awesome. Um, yeah, we also work like in support to Luis Fernando Sotelo, that it's a, another really young guy that was arrested after the 5th of November in some day of global action about Ayotzinapa, the 43 dismissed students of Ayotzinapa. In this day of global action, one metro bus, that it's a public bus, mm -hmm. it's public transport, was burned. Uh, it's not so, like people were on it, like nobody got hurt, it was just yeah. get everyone off. Yeah, <laughs> only the, the bus and the bus station was yeah. damaged. And he was... He and another guy was arrested in the university uh, under the accusation to do that. Mm -hmm. With the testimony of uh, the driver of the bus mm -hmm. that said that he recognized both of them. Then the other guy was released because he proved that he was in a camera recording in the Somewhere school. Else. Yeah. yeah. So the thing is uh, uh, that actually he's uh, in jail under like false testimony. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to say it in English. That translates false testimony. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, he's in jail right now, and he just was sentenced to. 33 years in jail. 33 years. Yeah. Okay. 33 years and five months or something like that. Is he that has that's not an ordinary? 21 years. He's like really. He's young. 21 years old. Yeah. That's not a nor normal like. It's not really usual that in Mexico you get <clears throat> such as a long sentence like that. Especially for property, just yeah, right? not even like killing someone. It's damage in property. The felony. It's not like. But it's supposed for the amount of the damage because it's some around three million millions of pesos. So there's a lot of money, yeah. and because there is like four different companies uh, claiming for the damages. Yeah, and there is also because I don't know. Does it say, say a lot of things? But it's not really usual. It's it's a long sentence. Does it set a precedent? I mean, when when like. Eric McDavid or Jeffrey Lures or Marius Mason received sentences of 20, 20 something years for property destruction that set a precedent in the United States and followed yes. like the FBI saying that eco de like eco defense was uh, terrorism and, and whatever else before 9 11. Is it, do you see like a shift in the Mexican system where they're determining that political actions are? now constitutive of like as dangerous as narcos or something? I suppose that, I don't know. We, well, right now he's still in the, in the, in the process, in the trial. So we are like really hoping that this sentence is gonna change, need to change because it's kind of <coughs> a little bit crazy, but yeah, <coughs> just was like sentenced to this. This 5th of November, he's gonna have two years in jail. And yeah, Fernando and Luis Fernando, both of them, are in a hunger strike right now. Mm -hmm. I think, because I don't have any news of the yeah, for two days. You've been but, away, yeah. But uh, yeah, he began the 28th of September, they begin a hunger strike. Uh, Fernando, Luis Fernando, and Abraham Cortez, that is also a a young guy that was arrested after the 2 of October demonstration in Mexico.
Mexico City. All the 12th of October, there is a, a memorial demonstration in Mexico about some students' uh, massacre that happened in 1968. 1968. Yeah. So in and that was like during the Olympics, right? That was peop students came out against repression, and then the military came in and killed what hundreds of them. No one knows. No one knows. Even today, no one knows because it's like it's the bodies was disappeared. It's like a really like it's dark total impunity. Yeah. No, no one was punished, and also no no one knows exactly how many people died, how many people f was put in like secret army prisons or things like that. Yeah. Yeah, it was like a really big thing, but well. In this demonstration, he was arrested three years ago. So the 20, and he was sentenced to 13 years, that also it's a lot. Yeah. He was a uh, uh, under tentative of murder against a cop for the injuries that the cops uh, have in the demonstration, for the riots in the demonstration. A so, lot of people was arrested after yeah. the demonstration and he was charged with this. We really don't know how the system of the cops choose him. It's like they arrest a lot of people after the demonstration and put this guy, this felony, mm -hmm. something like that. But well, he's also in the same jail with Fernando Barcenas. So they, they and Luis Fernando that is in, uh, in another jail start a hunger strike the 28th of September mm -hmm. of this year with, uh, if I'm right, three or four points. The first is uh, against the jail in general. Yeah. <laughs> against the jail in general. They don't claim for any specific reform or nothing for they. They are not, actually Fernando say that they are not uh, asking for nothing to the people that have the power. They are uh, uh, calling the people to the revolt, mm -hmm. yeah, to the insurrection. Yes. Uh, so the reasons of the strike, the hunger <coughs> strike, is for against the jail in general, the prison system, in solidarity with the the strike against the prison slavery in the United States, and in. in Commemoration for the senten for the detention of Abraham Cortez, the 2 of October, mm -hmm. and against the two three years sentence for Luis Fernando. Word. What kind of support, like, what kind of support has CNA been offering in this in the hunger strike? It's, it's not only us, but okay, okay. <laughs> with it's a lot of people. Good. But we also it's like we are asking the people for honey. That it's the only thing that they can to, to like mix in the water or whatever. Yeah. Like okay, yeah. And the hunger strike, they can like not exactly eat, but take honey for the energy. And also like demonstrations, we are calling for a for a, a graphic campaign, mm -hmm. like with uh, banners or. Posters or any graffiti, or, uh -huh, yeah, about the strike and like, uh, like putting the name in, putting the finger, like saying the name of the companies that put Luis Fernando in jail for 33 years, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and also making memory and remember that was Coca Cola company, the one that has uh, Fernando Barcenas in jail also. Mm -hmm. And it's not only the owners of the political powers, so also the owners of the economical powers, the ones that have our cameras in prison. So remember that in yeah. the graphic campaign is one of the things that we are saying. That um, yeah, but making like solidarity events out of the prisons, like talking with the family of the other prisoners, because one of the things that the government of the prison do is that when you start a hunger strike they remove you for the population mm -hmm. for you don't be a bad example to other prisoners mm -hmm. it's supposed that they do it for your safety yeah. but it's more like you don't 
It's so they can take you away and hide you and do whatever they want. Yeah. Yeah. And for, yeah, you don't be a bad example for the other prisoners. For, just for don't extend the revolt mm -hmm. or something like that. So we go outside and try to talk with the family of the other prisoners about the things that are happening in this prison. <clears throat> and try to, yeah, to let it know to the people, to they let it know to the families and the people inside of the jail know that there is someone in a hunger strike, there is these things happening. Mm -hmm. And yeah, things like that and yeah, different acts of solidarity, you know, try to support like with the honey, with the letters, with the, these things to try to make diffusion about the things that Fernando is saying about mm -hmm. the hunger strike and making like this, like banners and um, these things in yeah. support of the people that is making the strike. And also we are working with Miguel Betanzos. He's a guy from Oaxaca, from okay. Elochistlan, that it's an indigenous community in Oaxaca. They have a communal assembly and mm. there is a big conflict between the assembly and the political party's government in the community. And as a result of this conflict, he was arrested under the accusation of tentative of murder also. Mm -hmm. He was arrested in Mexico City because he is from Oaxaca, but he was studying in Mexico City. He was arrested and transferred to Oaxaca. Attempted murder of a police officer again, or no. like okay, uh, some of the guys of the political parties. Okay, okay. So he was uh, moving to a jail in Oaxaca, and he's in the jail there. He also uh, make uh, not a hunger strike, but he. I don't know how to say Ayuno. He stopped to it like two days. Mm -hmm. Fast. The 2 of October or something like yeah. that. In solidarity with the other prisoners that are making the hunger strike. Mm -hmm. But he also said that he's alone in Oaxaca. He don't yeah. have the possibility of someone going to visit and all the days on and him checking. And like, yeah. Because yeah, we also <clears throat> work with a medical care independent team mm -hmm. that go to visit each week the the prisoners in the hunger strike and there's some yeah there is some psychologists some nu nutritionists mm -hmm. and some like doctor regular yeah, yeah. doctor that are checking the people because they don't trust like the medical care of the jail so we have an independent team that is making this work and Miguel is in Oaxaca so they don't have this support yeah, that's a lot. so he just make one day in solidarity but we are also working with he and uh, support him, him in the things that is possible, like organizing, like benefits or things for support him and the pro legal process that he's dealing. And also trying to make diffusion about the situation in the community and the, and in particular the situation of of Miguel and the things that he also write because mm -hmm. he writes like short histories and poetry. Mm -hmm. also. You're listening to our conversation with a member of the Cruz Negra Anarquista of Mexico City, or the Black Cro Anarchist Black Cross of Mexico. You can find out more about their project at abajolosmuros.org. Abajo That's A-B-A-J-O-L-O-S-M-U-R-O-S dot O-R-G. This is the Final Straw Radio, and I'm Bursa Goodness. So like a decade ago, there was, we were talking about this earlier, like a decade ago is when there was an uprising and an insurrection in Oaxaca. And there was, I'm not sure how much of it was from that area, but what from what I was reading, there seemed to be a lot of, a lot of organizing and a lot of political people that were in that community from the, from those communities and from those like different indigenous groups in that area. Um, is there any infrastructure supporting this prisoner in, in his case in Oaxacan prison or is it no? No, not too much. He's like the people of the of the community a little bit, but the people of the community don't have a really easy situation also. So it's like it's uh, it's been hard for the prisoners. They have a a hard situation in the in the economical things yeah. and this kind of things for all of them. Yeah. You mean like Oaxaca and Guerrero? These are like some of the poorest yeah. 
states within Mexico, right? So yeah. So, yeah, and for the people that in Mexico City is trying to support Miguel, it's also really hard to do it because it's far away. So go mm. to visit him is like a, a long trip and you need money to make the trip and also money for give him some things for work his he make like quadros how do you say quadros like sketches notebooks quadros or you mean like paintings not sort of? but yeah but it's not painting they take pictures and then make with the pictures oh like collages Sorry? Uh, something like that. <laughs> okay. It's not collection, Makes but art. yeah, yeah, make art. Okay. And also he, I don't know how to say it, the hair, tampoco. Like knitting? Yeah, like hamacas. Okay. So, he need also like the Material, materials. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And is that is that mostly to pass the time or is that to be able to, to get money, to It's be able to do money. commissary and like, yeah. Um... In <clears throat> in the Mexican legal system, do you have? Because in, in the United States, it may be very crappy, but most people are at least promised uh, to have representation during the court trials. I know that the the Mexican system for for trials is different from the American system, or has been in terms of like you stand in court, you make verbal arguments to the it's, judge. It's different because yeah, it's distinct like. Uh, I don't know how to say in English also, but el jurado, mm -hmm. like these people that it's supposed that judge you. Okay, the judges, yeah. They It's don't cool. exist. It's okay. only, it's like, I don't know if it's like that Just or it's only the movies. But it's supposed that in the United States, the, like, the court, like, send letters to some, like, citizens and mm -hmm. they is the one that is going to make a decision the about jury. The, Yeah, yeah, the jury. Yeah, 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 okay. This don't exist in Mexico. Okay. It's only the judge. Okay. The one that takes the decision is the judge, <clears throat> it's only like that. And yeah, you have a lawyer, mm -hmm. that it's the one that is going to represent That the state gives you a lawyer? Or do you uh, have to pay yeah, for a lawyer? Yeah, sometimes. We don't... We never... Never like, take the state lawyer? No, oh, no okay. it's not a good idea. Yeah. No, it's like the same part and usually... Then, like, the lower that the state gives you, uh, don't do anything at all, or actually do things, like, that work for... The state. Yeah. Yeah, okay. So it's better that you have a lawyer. So we work also with uh, lawyers that are comrades, so mm -hmm. they work in solidarity, and mm -hmm. they don't ask for money, or they ask only for money for the transportation and the copies of the... Yeah, making photocopies or and these yeah, things they don't the yeah, they don't have like honorary yeah. or things like that <clears throat> and they are like really great persons also but yeah we don't just to work with like state lawyers because it's a really bad idea so. Mm. so at least I was thinking in terms of like legal defense stuff that people in the United States have to think about is sometimes people are lucky enough to have a movement lawyer um, or like a political or rad lawyer and there are associations but a lot of cases um, people especially depending on where they are like in North Carolina there's not a lot of movement lawyers but in the Bay Area there's a mm, lot of movement yeah. lawyers or like in New York so if stuff happens where I'm from we have to fund we have to get a bunch of money to pay yeah. off lawyers because eh, they have to spend a lot of money to be able to get the degree but also um, yeah that's just how it goes yeah it's hard yeah and In Mexico City, we have like some good relations with some lawyers. That's awesome. But yeah, in some other parts, it must be like so much so difficult. Um, yeah, that's it. You also can, I in the like legal system, you also can say that you take your. You can be your own lawyer. Advocate, yeah, yeah. yeah. But you need. <laughs> so you don't have free access to all the documents so it's not easy and all mm -hmm. it maybe makes sense if you're already a lawyer yeah but if you <laughs> aren't it's not a good idea but yeah something like that um how can people who are outside of mexico follow what's going on in mexico like are there any good english language sources for the work that cna does or 
do you need people to translate? Yeah, it can be a great idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, we, we don't use to translate too much because usually we don't have too much time. We have a, a page in Facebook. Okay, I know it's really bad, but yeah. we have it that it's Cruz Negra Anarquista. Mm. Cruz Negra Anarquista Mexico. And we also have a web page that it's www.abajolosmuros. Mm-hmm. Point. ORG, I suppose. Yeah. No. Org, I don't know how to say. But yeah. Abajo los muros, you find it really okay. easy. And also, right now, with all the things of the the strike here, it's in, it's going down. Have some things translated to English. Some of the statements of Fernando Barcenas mm-hmm. and the statement of the hunger strike in Mexico is translated in It's Going Down. That's awesome. But it's a great work. Mm-hmm. Um, for people that are listening in Canada or in wherever wherever they're listening to this, the U.S., uh, what sorts of solidarity like, would be requested or what would be helpful to come from comrades abroad? Uh, I don't know. Any way of solidarity. <laughs> it's, it's in translation, good. right? But In translation. Also, like any solidarity with actions, demonstrations, like... Uh, if you've got a Mexican embassy Mex- around yeah, you. Yeah, like. for example. Or, yeah, any, any, like, solidarity that they can do. Like, n- I don't know. It's, it's always hard. We always need money. Yeah. I suppose that all the people that work with prisoners yeah. need money all the time, but it's not the only solidarity that the people can do. Also, the people can make... Only diffusion about the situation of the prisoners. Also, if the people write Spanish, can read letters to the prisoners. That it's always great. I talked to some folks in, like, in Turkey a while back about ABC work that they do and work around political prisoners and work around pressuring their government to, or the government that's over them, not their government, but about um, changing. Like, I asked them, like, does it if somebody makes a protest somewhere that embarrasses your government because they're treating their prisoners poorly or because they're doing this thing, does that work? And they said, in their experience, no, international pressure doesn't really work to pressure the government. What it does is it can offer, it can raise the spirits of the people that are struggling on the inside. Is that, do you think, the case in Mexico or do you think that that helps? Like, I think that actually helps. Okay. I don't know exactly what's the situation in Turkey. Maybe the government of Turkey is not really a good friend of the government of the state, so it's not too easy. Yeah. But, yeah, I su- it's really hard to know, but I suppose that actually the demonstrations, like in the international level, make a little bit more pressure than the demonstrations in the national level. Because, yeah another country you know yeah. <laughs> it's like yeah I suppose that that works and yeah anyway it's better it's yeah it works in the level to to support the comrades that it's important thing and also we we just to say that also one of the better ways of solidarity is if it's if the people make the our struggles, because any struggle that happened in another part of the world make us stronger to all, so. mm-hmm. all of us. So. That's a good way of putting it. Um, was there anything else that you wanted to talk about? No. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for taking time, and thank you so much for speaking in a second <laughs> language. Really weird English. It's awesome. <laughs> it's so, it's great. It's, yeah, you did awesome. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Is Asheville FM your on-air go-to for new, old, and unconventional songs, plus local talk? Would you like to meet some DJs, see the studio, and donate to your favorite station? The upcoming Fall Fun Drive, ongoing currently actually, is the perfect opportunity. This week, through November 4th, from 10 a.m. until 8 p.m., we will have our studios open for the public and a tent for CD and record sales out front. Mark your calendars and come down to take a peek at 103.3 Asheville FM. 
We're available at 864 Haywood Road. You're listening to WSFMLP 103.3 in Asheville, North Carolina. This is the final straw, and I'm Bursa Goodness. The show can also be heard on KWTF in Bodega Bay, California, KOWALP in Olympia, Washington, and WCRSLP in Columbus, Ohio. The show will later be archived at thefinalstrawradio.noblogs.org, and you can email us with questions or suggestions at thefinalstrawradio at riseup.net.